Okay, SOCC 52. This is uh, devotion number 10. Uh, Jesus wept. This is kind of a, uh, a build on what we talked about last week. I think it's such an important story that in the 52 devotions, I actually uh, put two of them back to back about this story because, you know, there's there's 150 different ways to look at a different verses the Holy Spirit makes it come alive to you. So you see one thing one day and one thing the next. He knows what you need to hear today. So what he does is he brings the message according to what you need. So somebody listening to this, maybe it's not their day. <laughs> so, but somebody else, maybe it is, right? Or maybe, I don't know, the Holy Spirit's so powerful, maybe it makes everybody's day. But listen, man, this thing is so incredibly powerful. This revelation is so incredibly powerful. That's why I took the same story, but give it its own, its, its, its own the devotion. It says in John 11, 35, that when Jesus saw Martha, Mary, and all of his friends crying, man, that he started crying. If you look up the word in the Greek, it says wept with tears. So it was, it was real crying. It wasn't like he was just complaining, man. He, he literally wept. And the part that I didn't understand when I read it was, well, Jesus knew in about, you know, I don't know, in, in 20 or 30 minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead. And they were all going to be jumping around. I mean, think about it. It's who you, someone you really loved, your brother, your sister, your mother, your wife, somebody that means something to you that's been dead for four days, and, and you're just so bummed out, and you're ready to put them in the ground, and all of a sudden they jumped up and they're alive. You would be super happy. Well, Jesus knew they were going to be super happy, like in 15 minutes. So why was he weeping? Good question, man. And so he showed this to me when I started a prison ministry. You know, years ago, I used to be a chaplain up on death row, a volunteer chaplain with my buddy Earl Smith. And we had to come up with a verse to put on our logos. Our logo was praying hands with handcuffs. And, you know, you have verses like God is greater than he and you than you and he and then the world. And, you know, we can jump over a troop or jump over a wall and all these encouraging verses. So the Lord told me to use the web, uh, G John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus wept. And I was like, well, man, that's not very encouraging. And the Holy Spirit showed you it's super encouraging if you know why he was weeping. I said, okay. And as I was sitting there praying about putting Jesus wept on 10,000 t-shirts and our Bibles and on everything else in this 10-year ministry in San Quentin, I really wanted to know what it meant. And he showed it to me. It was what I want to show you today in this, this quick five or six minutes that we have so that you can grab onto it, walk out of your house or office or wherever and say, man, that gives me a boost, right? So... What he showed me was this. The reason Jesus wept is because he was the son of God. He was the one who spoke the word and the world came into existence. He was the one that came for his friends and for everybody else who believed in him. And they still didn't know it. That's why he wept. He was a they, they could have ran up and said, Jesus, Jesus, oh man, we're so glad you're here. We've been waiting for you to get a hold of Lazarus' hand and pull the sucker out of the, out of the tomb, man. We're, re we're ready. He, he, he was waiting for them to acknowledge that he was the son of God to deliver them out of the position that they were in. And when he showed up, all they could do was say, oh, Jesus, if you would have only been here. Like somehow or another, he wasn't in control of everything. And see, we do the same exact thing. We do the same exact thing when we get into a position and it seems like all is lost and a Christian brother or somebody shows up and says, hey man, let's pray about this. It ain't so bad if you tried this or that. And they say, oh, forget it, man. I tried everything. It's just, it's just not going to work. They're, they're, they're like the relatives and friends that are weeping. Well, check it out. Jesus said, if you do the things that I ask you to do, if you follow my commandments, I call you my friends. So when Jesus showed up there, to, to those friends of his, and they were all bummed out, not knowing who he was, he wept over that because he had done everything he possibly could to show them who he was, and they still didn't know it. Well, check it out. If you're following his commands, the Bible says you're his friends. So when you get in a tight spot and all looks like it's lost, and he shows up, are you going to say, oh, Jesus, if you just would have helped, or are you going to say, man, am I glad you're here? Because I know what you've done. I've watched what you've done. I've not only read it, I've experienced it. And man, I've been waiting. And now that you're here, thank you. Thank you. Can we get this thing, can we get this dead thing in the tomb out? Can we resurrect this thing that's died? Because I know you can, Jesus. 
See, that's, that's kind of what he was expecting, I think. There's no, I can't find any other reason why he would have wept. He knew he was going to bring Laz out. He knew there was going to be party time. So why would he weep 15 minutes before? It doesn't make any sense, except he was hoping, man, hoping that maybe after all he'd done, that they knew who he was, and they didn't. So when he shows up for you, I don't care what position you're in, take heart today, because he's coming. And if it seems like it's late, it's by design, because he wants to show up to boost your faith if you'll just believe in who he is. Don't make him cry.